Hello, it is Jane here again from Avoda Business Advisory. Uh, just coming back on here with an updated version of how to add an employee to Xero. Uh, yeah, I did one of these roughly four years ago now, I think. Um, everything's much the same, except we now have STP phase one and phase two reporting. So yeah, let's just go through everything we need to know to add an, like a new employee to zero. So we first want to go to payroll and click on employees. Now up in the, if you don't have any employees, this screen will be blank uh, and you'll still need to go to this top right hand corner uh, and click new employee. So here, the first page we have is the basic information that we need to fill out. And we have to fill out everything that doesn't say optional for us to move forward with this. So let's go ahead and create our first employee. Obviously, you can fill in the optional things as well uh, with their job title, gender, phone numbers, emails, that kind of stuff. I would recommend putting in as much information as possible. But just for this demo, we're just going to do the basic things that we need. And of course, emergency contact information down the bottom, which I would also suggest putting in. So once that's done, we just hit save down the bottom and then it takes us to a new screen where we can see all these other tabs. Now we're just going to go through each tab one by one. So the first one is employment. So this is one of the sections that has changed quite a bit since my last video on this. So there are two employment types, employee and contractor. So most of the time when we're adding in an employee to your zero file, it's going to be employee um, rather than contractor. So employee is someone that you hire and they're, they're employed by you. So they're on a salary. Uh, you pay them weekly, uh, they accrue annual leave, that kind of thing. Now, a contractor is someone, as it says here, who runs their own business. So they might have their own company, they might have, um, well, they should have their own APN. And generally, they would be invoicing you for services. Um, that's how it would normally work. So just for this example, and because it is Almost 99% of the time uh, when we're adding someone into zero, it's going to be an employee. Now, the next one here is the income type. Uh, there are three choices here. So salary and wages, closely held pays and working holiday maker. So most of the time, again, 90% of the time, it's going to be salary and wages. Uh, you will get... Uh, Sometimes it is for closely held employees. So if it's your own business and you're on, um, on as an employee, so you pay yourself a wage, uh, that's where it's going to be closely held piece. Anyone who's a director of the company or um, yeah, someone who is, is close to the business, uh, that's, that's essentially what you're going to pick. Um, and working holiday maker, that's self-explanatory. So that's going to be someone here in Australia working on a visa, um, visiting on a holiday visa, um, a holiday maker visa um, and working for you. So um, yeah, for this example, again, we're just going to do salary and wages because that is 90% of the time that is what uh, people are going to choose. 
Uh, so employment basis, there are obviously three options again, full-time, part-time, casual. Uh, I'm just going to go through setting up a full-time employee. So the start date, let's just pick as today. Um, another optional item for anyone I've set up, this is just being blank and we, we usually just do an award wage like based on fair work or just a contract that we have done up within our, within our business. The payroll calendar, um, this is actually set up in payroll settings. So if you don't have any calendars listed here, uh, we need to go back to the payroll settings, which you will find by clicking up here on your company name, settings, and then going into payroll settings and adding a payroll calendar. Um, I have made a video on that, so I will link it to this. Um, if you're watching this, um, before I, I might need to check to see how updated the video is so um, I will link the video uh, so yeah whether it's the updated one or the older one I'll just need to check that it's all still valid so we'll move forward with this anyway so fortnightly or weekly uh, let's put John on a weekly calendar employee group that's something i normally leave out as well um, probably useful for if you've got um, if you've got a lot of employees and you want to group them into different departments same for the holidays as well um, i like to include um, holidays in pay slips yes yeah, so the holidays are public holidays essentially so um, yeah, we like to include that into the payslip so your employee can see um, exactly what they've been paid in a week that has got public holidays in it. Uh, the earnings rate, uh, ordinary hours should always be there and you have to select ordinary hours for you to move forward. Uh, generally, we leave those blank uh, for authorization. And the superannuation membership. Now this, um, this can get a little bit complex, uh, same as the um, payroll calendars. It's, you have to go back into the payroll settings. So for this, uh, I'll try and link a video uh, to this video, just so you can see how to set up superannuation. Uh, Cause I'll show you if we go here, you're only going to have limited super funds to select from. You, you'll have none if this is actually your first employee that you're adding in. Uh, so once you've added in the super fund to the payroll settings area, it will come up here and then you will need to enter in their member number into this section. So we can move forward without that for now. It'll just say fund details pending. Um, but it is a requirement that you do have to have the super superannuation membership in there and you do have to pay super every three months to your employees. All right, now we've saved that page. We've just got to go back up to the top and go through to the next tab. Now taxes, this is where you would want to add in their tax file number. Um, or provide an exemption now. 90% of the time, again, your employee will have a tax file number. So we add that in there. Uh, select residency, Australian resident. Uh, generally, this is going to be left blank as well. Uh, unless your accountant or their accountant has advised to um, edit this section, I will just be leaving it blank for now. Select the tax scale. Now there are a few options here. Now, again, 90% of the time it's going to be regular um, unless your employee or your industry comes under one of these items. Now this you generally find if they have filled out their TFN declaration form. Uh, they would have ticked or not ticked some of these boxes. 
Um, so the study loans that is or what used to be called hex debt or vet debt. Uh, so if they're at uni or have been to uni and they're paying that off, um, you would select that uh, and the, claim the tax-free threshold now. Again, 90% of the time your employee will want that ticked. Um, if they filled out their form and they haven't ticked that, it's always best to double check uh, that that's what they want because uh, they'll be paying a lot more tax uh, throughout the year if they don't click that. So sometimes when they don't want that, it'll be um, if they've got two jobs, you can only you can only claim tax for one the tax free threshold for one job. Uh, and then yeah, these other ones are like I said items that would they would have ticked or not ticked in their TFN declaration form. And leave loading, uh, you just need to check um, with what industry you're in if an employee is eligible for leave loading. Um, yeah, and they typically receive more for leave loading, but it's only select industries that that applies to. All right, so we can, hang on, we'll just save for now. Don't file yet. Is that letting me do it? On? Okay, so yeah, we need the TFN, but because we don't have one here, we're just going to uh, say awaiting TFN. And it has saved successfully. So uh, just on moving on to the next tab now, which is the leave tab. All right, now we can see there's no leave applied to this employee. So we want to go assign leave type, or we can actually do assign default leave type. So let's see what that one is. All right, perfect. So if you go assign default leave types, um, it's automatically going to put in annual leave and personal leave, which is the sick pay. Um, but we do just need to double check what it has put in for a full-time employee. So there are various methods here on calculating it. Um, I would suggest doing it on based on ordinary earnings because if in a particular week, um, let's say they've taken some time off and they've had to take unpaid leave. If they have worked, say, 20 hours instead of 38 hours, it will actually reduce the annual leave earned for that time. Um, it'll do that all automatically. Um, whereas if you put a fixed amount each period, it's going to be the same every time, regardless of the amount of hours they work. Um, yeah, and manually, you have to enter it manually each time as well. Um, no calculation, I'd, yeah, rarely select that. I wouldn't worry about that one. Uh, and yeah, 152 hours is the amount of leave accrued by a full-time employee and 38 is normally the amount of time a full-time employee works. And annual leave termination is not usually paid out unless you've agreed um, with your employees that you will pay it out. So we'll save that. Um, we'll go through the personal leave. All right, now same as annual leave, it's input all the data here. So sick leave is always half of what um, annual leave is. Um, and here it says not paid out. Generally sick leave, yeah, no, sick leave is not paid out. That's right. Um, and annual leave is paid out. Yeah, annual leave is paid out. Sorry, I said it wasn't paid out before. But yes, annual leave is paid out and sick leave is not paid out normally. Um, but yeah, like I've said, if you've got an agreement in place with your employees, like it can be individual to each business. But as a general rule, annual leave is paid out, sick leave is not paid out. All right, and of course you can add in um, various other leave types as well. Um, long service leave, compassionate leave, that kind of stuff. All right, now moving forward, let's go to bank accounts. All 
right now you would put um, put all the details in here. So statement text could be um, John wages or a voter wages. Uh, employee's name pretty much is going to be who you're paying and then obviously their bank account, BSB and account number. So the benefit of putting in the bank account details is if you are uploading an ABA file to your internet banking uh, where you've got to pay multiple employees, uh, all of this information will transfer over to the bank account. So, uh, yeah, it'll come up wages uh, and it will yeah, automatically transfer to the numbers that you've input in here. Uh, so it makes it pretty flawless when paying people. Uh, so you're not going to stuff it up by inputting the wrong amount in. Um, and it's very quick. Uh, so instead of, you know, manually inputting the data for each employee, it does say 10, 20, 30 people at a time, all in the one go. Um, sometimes you do have to contact your bank to allow those payments to go through, though. Um, so moving forward, we'll show you the payslips tab. We generally don't have to do anything to this. Um, the payslips tab is just where all the payslips sit for that particular employee. So it's just a history of their payslips. So the pay template. Now this one is important. So this is where we set up their pay template. So um, this is what will happen. This is what you set up for if you go to payroll and pay employees. Um, it basically is just replicating what will be on that pay employees screen. Um, but whatever you set up in here will always push through to that pay employees tab. So we'll set it up to go add earnings line and we generally just want ordinary hours and enter rate or we can um, use the annual salary. For this we'll just enter rate and say 38 hours at $30 an hour. Yeah, if that was salary, um, it would just have the salary rate there. Our deduction line would generally leave that blank uh, and the superannuation. Now that pulls all the information through from, I think the employment tab where we originally set up the super fund. Uh, so as you can see here, it says fund details pending which is what we set it up as and reimbursement line we generally leave that blank as well you can obviously add these things in during each pay run so as a general guide for this pay template you want it these two things so the earnings rate and the super fund um, if that's going to be the same every week or every fortnight that you pay your employees you generally want to pop it in here because uh, it's just one less thing to edit and enter in when it comes to paying employees. So we'll go save. Um, now the opening balances. Now I have done another video on this. I'll try and link it as well. Um, yeah, not too common that you need opening balances, but this is good or, or you know, mainly used for if you're transitioning from a different payroll software into zero. All right, and that's it. Um, yeah, guys, sorry, if you've got any questions at all, uh, feel free to comment below and I'll try and answer them and get back to you. Uh, I know this can be a little bit, a little bit confusing and quite in depth. So I do apologize if I've missed anything. Uh, and yeah, if you've got any, any questions at all, please yeah, pop them in the comments below. I'll see you again in a few more weeks for my next video. Um, also, if you've got any recommendations on uh, videos that you might like um, a guide with um, or any, any, any help with zero uh, that you'd like me to cover, please also drop it in the comments as well. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.